Hello everyone, today I'll be doing a very beginner's guide to Roblox Studio, so this will include, um, a little of the basics, and if you continue with this, there will be a, um, scripting, some scripting tutorials later on, so make sure you watch this video and those videos later on. Obviously, there's none uploaded currently as of the upload date. If there is, then there's going to be a card right now, hopefully, if I remember, but there's going to be a card right now up in the corner showing you the first scripting video. So yeah. Anyways, um first you're going to have to download Roblox Studio if you don't know what Roblox Studio is. It's basically how every game is made. Um link is in the description to download it. It's pretty straightforward and you should enter up on the screen. Just so you know, I'm using dark theme. Doesn't really have much of a difference except it makes the code look a bit different. But you're going to want to enter in one of these games. Um, so I'll be explaining them. So gameplay games are like gameplay games. I don't really know what else to say about them, but they're basically like, um, pre-made games. Think of it like that. Theme games are basically like, uh, uh, some of these are pre-made, like, um, the Suburban, I think has like pre-made like cars and stuff. So if you want to work off those, you can, uh, and then like the, uh, ones that are just terrain and base plates which is what you're going to be using the most. Um, these are just empty. So we're going to hop in a base plate. doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, you don't have to actually open the studio for this if you don't want to, but if you want to follow along, you can. Uh, Alright, I'm just clearing that output there. You probably don't know what any of these things are, so I'm going to go over basically everything here. Um, So how it should start out is your property should be somewhere like under here without the output. I don't really know, um, but make sure that you have the Explorer, which is this thing. Uh, it has, like, um, all these weird-looking names or whatever with different little icons next to them. And Properties, which should have nothing but filter properties up here. Um, uh, make sure you open those up. If you don't know how to, which I'm guessing you don't, you go to View. Uh, then here are the Explorer and Properties. I'm just going to move the Properties over here doesn't really matter. And then there's also, um, uh, the, sorry, I can't, I don't know where it is, I'll put there, uh, which should pop up at the bottom, I like keeping it at the bottom, you can rescale everything if you want, uh, but I'm not going to be doing that. But yeah, so let's get into Roblox Studio. So first off, let's start out with the controls, um, so to move around, or first to move your camera you right click just like if you were in a roblox studio game like that you can also uh do whatever this is kind of moving the camera um i i sometimes accidentally do use this if i'm using blender because this is how um or sorry if you like middle mouse button click like scroll click then you do this not really that important i don't use it so now you know how to move this or move the camera you just right click and hold and drag your mouse uh, to move forward, it's just W, um, move backward, A, and then you guessed it, right is D, left is A. So you, you can basically move around with this, but if you want to be more precise, if you hold shift while going any direction, you will go slow, like this. And if you scroll, uh, then you go really fast. So yeah, those are basically the controls for that. Um, And now we should get into what... Uh, each of these tabs that we have open are, so now, um, uh, yeah, so I'm going to be explaining what each of these icons are, so you can see our properties are changing as we click onto each of them, but, yeah. So first off, we have the workspace here, and think of the workspace as the, um, as whatever you see in-game. So if I were add, to add a part here, which you just click in here, and you can add whatever part you want, or not whatever, there's only four options. Let's just add a block here. So you can see this block or part is inside of the workspace here. And the workspace is basically where every like all the game objects are stored, basically. Uh, so this is where if you're like making a house or something, you'll want to put it here. There's also another option to put it there. I'm just going to remove this brick. So as you can see, we have like our base plate in here. Um, so we have our base plate. And this is in the workspace. If we were to drag it to, like, players or something, as you can see, it would disappear. Um, so we're just going to leave it like that. 
and close the workspace because it, it's it's a little bit hard to explain uh, what that really is, but I'll just explain it with saying that it's basically what, um, like, the game parts, basically, is what it is. They have the players, uh, so if we were to play the test the game, if you don't know how to play test, you go up here, you have three options, you can either play, you can play here, or you can run the game. So playing, uh, you just play normally, you go to the nearest spawn point, if you don't know what a spawn point is, I'll explain that a bit later. Uh, play here, which is going to play you wherever your camera is, so it would play me, like, around right here. Or you have run, which just runs the game, so you're not actually a player in the game. So I'm just going to use play here real quick. And as you can see, uh, there will be a lot of arrows under each of these tabs. Um, but obviously we're fo we are focusing on the players. So as you can see, uh, this is us right here. It's not actually our main body. It's just like the player in game. So if we were to remove it, it would remove like the leaderboard and stuff like that. Uh, and all the values, GUIs, stuff like that. Um, you probably don't know what those are. I'll be talking about those a bit later. Uh, but if we were to remove this, which is currently in workspace, uh, as I was saying b before, it's basically um, what's inside of the game. If we were to, if we were to delete this like that, uh, we can't move anymore. Uh, it's basically just like if we exited the game, basically is what we just did. But obviously, we're still in the game, but we can't move, can't do anything. So yeah, as you can see, that's basically what the player is. It just holds all the players in game. Lighting, you can change the sky color. Not really focusing on that, but you can change like the sky, what it looks like, uh, and other stuff like that. Replicated first uh, isn't really important. I don't think. I don't really like really know this much, but I don't think you'll be using it very much. Um, again, uh, I'm I'm still learning. I never said that, but I'm still learning. Uh, Roblox Studio. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty good at it. Um, that's why I make a video. But uh. Don't, ne don't necessarily know what replicated first is, or you won't be needing it. Replicated storage uh, is basically, um, if we were to put our base plate in here, it's just storage. Uh, so if if I wanted to make maps for my game, right, uh, I could add a folder in here called maps, and I could drag the base plate in there. Obviously, it would be a very bland map. So then every time that um, like the round is over or whatever, then it would uh, move from replicated storage to workspace, and then you'd be able to see the map. Basically, uh, we have server script service, uh, which is which holds all the scripts. Um, uh, you can only enter uh, normal scripts and module scripts in those, and also folders. Uh, I'll get to more of that stuff later. Server storage isn't that important. It's just storage. Again, I don't really use it much, so I don't know of it much. Uh, so GUIs, uh, as I was talking about earlier, uh, starter GUI is like a um, button. So if you've played like... Um, Bloxburg, dot me, stuff like that. There's buttons on the screen. Um, let's try a picture right now if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, so it's just a, uh, it's like a, it, it's just a, um, like buttons basically. And the starter GUI basically means whenever a player joins, they will see the GUI. If that makes any sense. Uh, then we have starter pack. Uh, if you play tycoons and stuff, you know what, like a sword, you know, um. Basically, whenever you join the game, it'll give you that sword. If that makes any sense. Um, again, starter player just has uh room for like scripts and stuff. Uh, then sound service. You can add sounds. These aren't really much important. Chat. You can just uh add chat stuff like that. So we basically got all those done for now. Uh, now properties. So if I were to add a part into the game, right? Uh, as you can see, it's in the workspace and um. Properties, as you can see, uh, if, if you've been looking right here, as you can see, it changes when I move the position. But properties, think of it as like a, um, think of it as, like, I don't know how to explain this, but think of it as, um, like, it, it's just a property. So, like, like, for example, you got brick color. I can change this to any color I want. Um, I think you can also make custom colors, uh, as well. Yeah, from here, you can make your own custom colors. Whatever you want, I'm just gonna keep it as medium stone gray, uh, like it is. Uh, material, which changes the material transparency. So if we set this to one, not zero, I mean one, so you'd see it. It's completely invisible. We set it to 0 0.5, it's partially invisible. Reflectance basically just turns this brick into a mirror. Um, got the name of it, so we can name this to brick if we wanted to. Set apart, and it would change in the workspace. Just 
Um, you'll see why you need a name stuff, and you can't just name everything brick, or, like, part. Uh, orientation, and stuff like that. There's just a ton of stuff. Uh, parent, uh, so if you don't know what a parent is, um, it's like, so, all these, all these in here are children, so think of it as, like, a family, right? So, you, like, if you're watching this, you're the child of someone. So, think of it as, like, these. These are the children of the game. Uh, there's nothing in the Explorer that shows game. So, the part, or the brick, would be the child of workspace. And the the brick's parent would be the workspace, because it's inside of it, as you can see. It's, like, inside of it. If we moved it to players, then the parent would be players, if that makes any sense. Uh, so, it's it's pretty easy to understand. If you don't understand it now, it's it's not it's not that hard, but... But yeah, uh, position just changes changes the position, and now I'm going to be talking about anchored um, in can collide real quick. So right now, our brick is obviously off of the base plate. If we were to run the game, which again I showed you is basically like if you um if if you didn't have the player in the game, so you can see when we run it, the brick just falls down. Uh, so we can like move it up as much as we want, and as you can see, it just falls down. Uh, we can actually change gravity as well, I think, somewhere down here. I don't really know where, but if we change it to, ma like, massless, it'll just... I don't really know if that makes any difference, but... Yeah, so you can, uh, I think it's actually in, like, workspace or something where you can change gravity or something like that, but... It, it, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 you can change, like, the gravity, like, like, a thousand or something, and the brick will fall a lot faster, like, as you can see. Uh, or you can change it to, like, 1, and it'll change, like, ri or fall very slow. Again, I'm getting very off-topic here. But, um, yeah, so that's basically that. Uh, so if you anchor it, um, and you run the game, it will stay anchored, and it won't fall down, as you can see. It's just here, no matter how far I move it up, whatever, it, it just stays anchored. Uh, if you can't move bricks through the base plate, I'll, I'll show you how to change that real quick. Um, real quick a bit later. Why not tell you now? Uh, so collisions right here. Uh, not that collisions. As you can see, I can't move it through the base plate. So you're gonna want to automatically check that off. Just makes it a lot easier for your game. Uh, can collide. Uh, is basically just a check mark. Um, so if it's true or if the check mark is like a check, then that means that people will collide with it. Like players in the game will collide with it. They can't go through it, but if it's turned off, then players will be able to go through it. So think of it like a, um, I don't know, like a pool. If you're building a pool, right? So let's say uh, this is just the water that you have. Obviously, this is very bad, and I recommend using Part to Terrain, which is a plugin, which you probably don't know. But we would want to have Can Collide to False because we wouldn't want people like standing on the pool. Obviously, that's not the best uh, idea to use like, best thing to use for a pool. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Uh, if you don't know how to undo or redo stuff, you can just press these buttons, or press Control z Um, Control x I think, is redo. I'm not too sure about that. But yeah, that's basically what the properties are. Locked, I don't think you can, like, select it or anything. It's just locked. Um, but yeah, that's basically it for properties. Uh, these are actually pretty helpful in-game, um... I know they don't seem like a big deal right now, but they are helpful, trust me. Uh, so now let's talk about um, the output real quick. Um, you won't really get it now, but if there's like an error in scripts or anything, it'll just appear in the output. You're always going to want to have this open, it's really helpful. But yeah, let's talk about um, all the tabs up here. So, first off we're going to talk about the home um, tab. So as you can see, uh, you have multiple things here. Select. You can select whatever part or group, which I'll talk about later, or like model, um, which I'll again talk about later. So you can see you can just drag it wherever you want. Um, nothing too much to that. You can just select, like, you can't select base plate, but anyways, because uh, it's locked, I think. Yeah, it's locked. Um, move, uh, I was using this a bit earlier, just moves apart. Pretty simple. Scale, um, scales objects, so if you want this to be bigger, uh, you can move it like this, or if you want it to be even bigger, then you can use control, and it, or, like, not even bigger, but if you want it to, like, move it on both axes, or axes, I don't even know, uh, then you can do that, um, that, uh, 
then you have rotate, which kind of sounds like what it is. Just rotates the part. Um, up here, collisions. These stuff you don't really need to worry about right now, except for collisions. Obviously, I showed you that a bit earlier. Terrain editor. Again, don't really need to focus on it. Toolbox. Um, this is a bad habit. Uh, don't do this. Um, but you can basically get uh toolbox items for your first games. You can use some of these. Like if I want this, which is gonna like lag out my game. Uh, then as you can see, this is like a map that we have. Or if I just wanted something a lot more simple, like a tree in my game. Then as you can see, we have our tree here. So it's basically pre-made objects by other people. So you can search up whatever you want. Like if I wanted like a boombox in my game, and have that. Uh, bubble chat, filtered bubble chat with. But uh, yeah, just make sure to look at the reviews. So it's like a something has like like bad reviews, kind of like this. You don't really want to use it. Um, but yeah, that's basically it uh, for toolbox. Not really anything unique. Uh, then we have the parts, which you can insert parts in UI, which basically just opens this. As you notice, I was talking about UI a bit earlier. I'll probably introduce you guys to it uh, a bit later. In the video, maybe, or I'll, I'll just talk about these probably this video because this is getting kind of long. Material color, uh, basically the same thing in properties. Um, but yeah, all right. So now we have one of the most important parts, and that's uh, grouping stuff. So if I were to duplicate this part, uh, it, which is Control D, if you don't know, I don't know if there's any like shortcut up here or whatever, but just use Control D to duplicate, or you can use Control C V and it'll duplicate it on top. But um. Or it will like, copy and paste it. I just use duplicate. It's a lot easier. So if I wanted to group these two parts, uh, what I could do is I could click group or control G, uh, and basically group them. So it's like, um, if it was like one object to begin with, basically. So it, it just makes things a lot more tidy and easier to like ref or not necessarily easier to reference in scripts. Uh, if you don't know what I mean by reference and stuff, which you probably don't. Uh, I'll talk about it a bit later, but yeah, again, just makes it easier. Um, just grouping stuff makes it a lot more tidy in here, stuff like that. Um, and you just want it, so then you can select parts easier, or not select, yeah, basically select parts easier. We have game settings, which you can't use, because unless you've published your game already. And then we have run, or play button, which we don't really need to talk about. But yeah, that's basically it uh, for this tab. Then we have model. Uh, model has basically the same thing. It has uh, transform, which doesn't really matter. Just transform stuff um, like that. Uh, then we have one of the most important parts. So you have um, moving here. So if you wanted to move this by 100 or maybe 10 studs, not as much, uh, then we can move it by 10 studs. As you can see, uh, when we were dragging it before, like I'm, as you can see, it's dragging by more. Uh, so it, makes, it basically just moves it uh, by 10 studs. If you want it to be like nothing, then you can move it by zero, and then it'll be very smooth. I like keeping it at 0.5, that's half a stud, uh, because what it does is it, 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 it I just like it, um, either use that or, uh, 0.25 studs. Then we have rotate, um, same thing basically, so you set it to zero, uh, it makes it really smooth to rotate, but however, if you set it to like, uh, not 10, um, 45, um, then it will be like, more blocky. I think 45 is the default. I always use 22.5, uh, which is half of 45, and it, it, it works for me. I like it the way it is. Uh, so that's that's that. Uh, we have these, same thing, uh, surface. So if I wanted a studs on this, then I could put studs on this. Um, yeah, nothing too important there, obviously. Um, and we have unions and negatives here. So, uh, this is one of the more important parts as well. So, uh, basically, you have to use a mesh, um, if you want to make, like, really complex parts. If you don't know, if you don't know what a mesh is, it's basically, like, um, think of it as, like, uh, it's, like, a part. So, anything, like, since you only have four parts, you're very limited in Roblox Studio. However, if you, if you use something, like, um, blender or something then you can make really really complex parts like i was showing you earlier like the map or the map may have been made in roblox studio but um for example this pro maybe the propane okay um here let's get like an actual example here um 
for example, this boom box had to be made in, um, had to be made as a mesh. I mean, ju just, I mean, look at it. It's, like, very complex. How could you make this in Roblox Studio? You'd have to try, like, really, really hard. So, mesh meshes just make it a lot easier. Or, it's not necessarily easier, but it just makes it, um, a lot more convenient. You have a lot more shapes and stuff. Uh, so, if you wanted to make complex shapes, so let's say, well, we want to go in this model. We want to make, um, let me just, uh, ungroup this real quick. Uh, ungroup. So we have these. Uh, if, if I wanted to, um, cut a hole, basically, in this, what I can do is I can scale this up to, um, my needs. So let's just scale it like that. And then what I could do is I could drag this on like this. Let's say I wanted it, like, half a stud, tall, kind of like that. And I wanted to cut a hole right here. Uh, I don't know if that's centered. I'll just try to center it. So then, uh, OCD people don't hate me. Uh, I think that's centered. I don't know. I'll just, like, put it down here. Just, I don't know why. Anyways, um, uh, we go back to model. Um, if we're, then what we could do is we have to select the brick that we want that will be, like, the hole, basically. We make this negative. Then, as you can see, it turns, like, pink and something. It, it kind of collides with it, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, also make sure that you, uh, Oh yeah, um, just, if, if you don't want to make it negative again, then you can just do that. But make sure that's above, or else it could cr cause, like, weird errors. Uh, anyways, sorry, this is not really straightforward here. But you click negative for the part that you're cutting a hole in. Then you select both of these. Uh, if you want to select both, you can either press shift, like that. Or if you wanted to do it through here, like, for example, I want to select this and this and this, if I press shift, it wouldn't work because it would select the base plate as well. So you can just press control and it'll select both both of those. Uh, and then what we do is we press union. As you can see, it made ourselves a hole. Uh, obviously, you can be like more complex and whatnot, but that's basically just uh, basics of it. I'm just going to put it, put it back in the group like it was um, before that. Boom. Uh, and then you have effects, which just causes effects and stuff like that. And you got scale, or spawn, not scale. Uh, this is really large, so I'd recommend just scaling it down. Um, it looks really weird like this, but if you scale it down enough, it looks fine. But that's basically where players will spawn when they first enter the game. You can add multiple, stuff like that. Uh, and that's basically it for model. Um, and then you have all these advanced stuff here that you don't need to worry about. Test, um, I already talked about this, really. Um, then you also got, uh, servers here. Uh, so if you want to make, like, a server, think of it as, like, a, uh, Roblox game, basically. Uh, you could start a server. I did not mean to start a server, though. Um, yeah, that's not really good. Uh, so let me just close out of this, maybe. Oh my god, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but. Uh, yeah, we just don't want to have that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so that basically just starts, like, a game, basically, with two, like, not NPC characters, because you can control them, but, yeah, it just does that. Um, we have device, uh, which you can change the device of, uh, like, what, so, for example, for GUIs, for buttons, um, they sometimes get messed up on other devices, so it's, it's nice to see, um, on each device what it has. You have, like, player emulation, stuff like that. Um, and then you have audio. View uh, just has all these. I'm not going to explain all these right now, because um, the only important ones are uh, probably toolbox, um, output, uh, explorer. Actually, you don't need command bar. I don't know why I have that. Um, you don't really need it. Uh, so explorer properties and output are basically the main important ones here. And then plugins, which I'll explain. Sorry, this is not really organized. We can't organize them at all. But uh, basically, plugins are make stuff easier. So, for example, um, like what I was talking about earlier, parts of terrain. For example, uh, if I wanted to make uh, this ice, I guess. I don't really know. Uh, that is very weird. But, um, yeah, so plugins just help you out uh, that you can't do in Roblox Studio. Think of them as add-ons. Uh, to Roblox Studio, think of them as, like, mods to a game, basically. 
like paint to click is also a helpful one if I wanted to paint these white or gray for some reason. It does not look gray, but um, I could do that. So yeah, that's basically it for plugins, and I think that's basically it for the tutorial. Uh, if I did miss anything, or if you have any questions, just uh, comment down below. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, just comment down below if you have any questions. I don't know if I I didn't I obviously didn't hit on every single thing, but I hit on most of the things that are pretty important. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Also, thank you for a thousand views. If you stuck to the end here, thank you guys so much for sticking to the end. I know this is probably going to be quite a long video. Uh, in the scripting tutorials, it's probably not going to be as long. So yeah, hope you guys did enjoy uh, this video. If you want more Roblox tutorials, uh, make sure to comment down below if you would. And yeah, I hope you guys have a nice day, and I will see you guys next time.